join me for the invocation. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. takes a second. Okay. Our first reading this morning comes from Genesis chapter 45 verses 1 through 15. Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him and he cried out, send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. 
Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you for the remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and the Lord to all, of, to all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall hear me, you and your children, and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now, your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept on his, upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Our second lesson for today is from <clears throat> the epistle of Paul to the Romans, chapter 11. <clears throat> I ask then, has God rejected his people? <clears throat> By no means. I myself am an Israelite, an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient. In order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. Sometimes we have to confess with much chagrin 
that we ourselves are often the source of our own discomfort. As in the great question, who is the idiot that put that thing where I could fall over it? The answer often is that I myself am the idiot that put that thing there. I meant to put it away, but I forgot. The Bible is full of stories about trauma, hurt, disappointment, misadventure, and its eventual healing by act of God. Such a story we considered last week and we consider again this week. Joseph's older brothers, being jealous of their father's love, are envious of Joseph, whom Father Jacob loves more than they. Thus the story begins with family dynamics. Today, we would regard this open favoring of one child over the others as bad parenting. We would also not approve of Jacob's quadruple marriage, or however we would characterize his um, 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 uh, living arrangements. Joseph's brothers conspire to kill him, but settle upon selling him into slavery instead. Off he goes to Egypt with a band of Arab traders, and they think that they are done with him. Alas, they fall upon hard times. They themselves have to win their way to Egypt to beg for bread or work or anything and find themselves before the Grand Vizier of the Pharaoh and it turns out to be the very brother they had packed away a decade or two before. Now, what is Joseph to do? Remember that I began this morning by speaking of trauma, hurt, and disappointment. In our story now, there is trauma all over the place. There is a drought in Egypt and all over the Middle East. Joseph's brothers and kinsmen are hungry, so they are experiencing trauma. Joseph has been betrayed by his own brothers and sold into slavery, what could be more traumatic. And yet somehow, he is now on top of the world. He could exact his revenge, but he does not. Instead, we must confess that he did toy with his brothers for a while. He exacted a little bit of revenge. He could have done a lot worse. But at this point, he is tired of his own game, and the Bible tells us that he cried out, sent everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers, as the Bible tells us. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. And he said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be distressed or be angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. Understand that God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was, it was not you who sent me here, but God. So there is the key to getting over trauma. Three keys, actually, three. One is, of course, forgiveness. Two, very important, seeing the hand of God in what is apparently a tragedy. And three, is finding a way to yet preserve life in spite of everything that has happened. The most important, I think, is the last. Joseph was a blessed man in spite of everything, and he knew it. And he had the resources to see himself as blessed and to do something with all of his blessings 
to preserve life, not just for his family, but for the people of the land who welcomed him as a stranger. Let us all this summer look into our hearts and find there the resources to preserve life and give thanks to God. Amen. In number 61. Thank you.